Uh, Dan, just real quick, I want to get to the news of the hour. Any idea why the market turned? It's been, I, I know it's light volume, it's summertime. Most people are, a lot of people are at the beach where they could still be trading, I guess. But um, I, I guess the question is whether or not how sensitive stocks are right now to the bond market. Uh, I think the stock, stocks are really sensitive to everything right now. If you look <laughs> at it, um, what's driven a lot of this market, I mean, clearly there's been some improvement in the economic data that you're well aware of, Steve. But I think beyond that, it's been improving investor sentiment and improving liquidity. I think that story is long in the tooth. And so I think, you know, basically everybody's capitulated into markets. So, you know, at these valuations, at these levels of positioning and sentiment, it doesn't take a whole lot to get the market. So is this like a sell the news? We have been pricing in lower inflation and less Fed, and now the market has reason to say, okay, that process is, we've kind of priced that in already. Maybe, or what news, I guess, is the bigger question. I mean, really, you didn't, it came in basically in line with expectations. Right. Um, and it's kind of what you would expect. I think we have one more CPI report before the next Fed meeting. So, I mean, what do you really make of this? Not much. I think that's a good question to throw to our other guest here, uh, Mark Zandi. Mark, is there more news in this report than, than what meets the eye? Is the headline and the core are what they appear to be? Well, I think the news is that inflation's headed in the right direction. All the trend lines look pretty good here, Steve. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it hit the 0.2% month-over-month expectation, but that's pretty darn good. And I think the, the key number here is that 3% annualized over the last three months. So feels like everything's moving in the right direction here. So I think that's the news. We're, we're on track to getting inflation back to the Fed's target in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Mark, you disappoint me, nerd that you are. I thought you were going to go out to the 100th with me on this. And it was really 0.16, which means we were yeah. 0.02 from a serious upside surprise of rounding down to 0.1. And by the way, that's two months in a row we've been in that 1.16 where we've just barely uh, uh, rounded up to 0.2. I, I guess my question is, is there more uh, juice in this decline than we're seeing. Um, to play devil's advocate, I don't know that we're going to get another 8% month-on-month decline in airline fares again. Energy is going to reverse itself. Uh, is this about the floor for the moment, or do you see reason to believe that it's going to be coming down even more? No, we got more juice. I mean, we got vehicle prices. Uh, they're going to decline more. Uh, it might. We might see a little bit of a hiccup here. It depends on the UAW strike. If there's a strike, that means less production. That means that prices won't come in as fast as I'm anticipating. But barring that, you know, production is picking up in Japan and Germany. Supply chains normalized, and we're going to get uh, lower vehicle prices. And the really important thing is that the growth in the cost of housing services is going to slow. We, you know, we can forecast this with a high degree of confidence because it's tied directly to market rents, and we can observe those market rents. They've been flat to down for the last six, nine months. And by construction, that means over the next six, nine, 12 months, we're going to get uh, a moderation in, in that. And that, as you know, in the CPI, the Consumer <clears throat> Price Index, that's about a third of the index. So that's a big deal. Less less of a deal in the consumer expenditure deflator, the PCE, what the Fed looks at and says right. monetary policy. But nonetheless, uh, you know, good news there. And one last thing I'll throw into the mix, electricity prices are coming in. And I expect more of that because natural gas prices, which are right. the, you know fuel stock for, for a lot but of electricity. For, I just want to point out, for the record, housing costs did tick up in this one, although the expectations are coming. Dan, what is the next catalyst here? Do we just need people to get back from the beach? Uh, or is there more here? It looks like the market kind of gave a yawn at this uh, uh, quarterly uh, earnings report. Mm -hmm. um, I guess they were a little bit better than expected, not a lot better than expected. What's the next thing, or does the market start trading on the fear of a, an October government shutdown? Yeah, I think, you know, the big thing is going to come back to earnings, but clearly, you know, you can get an uh, edge on what earnings are going to do, you know, based on the macro data. So whether it's a big macro report like the ISMs or other PMIs, or it's just the earnings themselves, I think that's ultimately going to be the critical thing because basically we are at or near an inflection point in earnings, coming up on the trough in earnings. And inflection points are always tough because you're getting a lot of mixed signals here. So the base case is that things start to get better. You're starting to see positive signs, but there's plenty of stuff out there that Mark has also talked about in the past that you know could really dampen this, this, uh, this recovery, whether it's the weakening consumer trends, it's the uh, lack of big pickup in, in the good side of the economy, uh, or it's the lack of pricing power. Earnings for uh, revenue growth for the S and P is basically zero. Right. And so, if you have an, if you don't get that pickup, that operating leverage gets a lot I, more difficult. I worry that we're priced too much for perfection here. That we were, everybody was on one side of the ship, and that was the ship that that had the ship kind of turning over.